Yes, if you're new to this channel, let, let me welcome you mm -hmm. uh, to week five. We are going through the Bible, uh, the New Testament rather, in one year using the Bible project of New Version. Mm -hmm. And so download the app. Uh, here are some ways in which you can download that, uh, get your friends to go along with us, mm. and you can read And every week on Monday at 6 a.m. Right. We are your plan to give you the takeout that you can look forward to in mm. that week. Yeah. First of all, we are at the, we've just come from the end of you know, 21 years of fasting. I know, fasting. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hey. excited for people who are, have been reading the word, you've been feasting on God. Oh, come um, on. Sweet times. Well, yeah. getting into the rhythm I of know. eating again. <laughs> uh, but uh, wait slow and steady. Follow yeah. the guideline. <laughs> Follow the guideline of getting off the fast that you don't want to stuff like that. that. But I'm excited. So we start, we kick off this week um, uh, starting uh, in chapter 20. Yeah. And we've been... Uh, going through a lot of parables, mm. Jesus primarily, in fact, he says one third of his teachings uh, are through parables. Come on, and so we're in the in the space where Jesus is giving a parable in in chapter twenty of the reading. But I wanted to just uh, remind people what a parable is. So he he teaches through parables, and and it's how Jesus talks is he comes alongside something in creation to give us wow. a spiritual truth, Come a heavenly on. truth, mm. and so that's what a parable is. So. We start in a parable on the laborers in the vineyard, and it's about the best boss in the world, hey, having the best boss I in the know. world. But the principle for this parable comes out from last week's reading or from Sunday's reading, yeah. which is about the rich young ruler, wow. the rich young man who came up to Jesus and says, you know, how do you enter the kingdom? Yeah. And so then Jesus, you know, tells him, give up everything. And the guy's like, hey, boss, Your it's too boss. much. It's too much. I ain't going to up for this. I'm okay with prostitution on the ground. I'm okay with worship. <laughs> but but uh, don't tell me. Don't tell me to give up. Everything, not my wealth. Yep. Um, but I love how he ends, and, and this is the principle that is carried forward in the parable, and yeah. he uses a parable, and it ends in, in uh, verse 30 that says, um, 19, 20, uh, verse 30, it says, but many who are first mm. will be last, and the last first. Wow. So he does this parable about the vineyard and he says the kingdom of God is like a, a master who is, you know, a good boss who comes and calls some laborers in the morning and yep. they agree on wages and he says, I'm going to pay you this much mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Yeah. But then in the middle of the day, the guy goes out again. Yep. He gets some, he finds some guys. Because the harvest is still there. The harvest is there and he sees some guys are just chilling. He says, are you guys are chilling? Yeah. He says, come, come, I'll give you. Yeah. Uh, so we, we can't cause that. We can't, yeah. you know, we can't I, disagree. I, 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 <laughs> so he says, I'll give you enough wages so the guys go into work but then he goes out again and yeah. gets some more says, you guys are still, yeah he says you guys are still here you're just chilling yeah and uh, he's like come 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 i have some work for you to come do. on and so he calls him and says i'll i'll still pay you a good yeah. amount of money then it says an hour to the end of the day yeah he walks out and he says you guys have nothing to do and you know what i like about what those guys say they say we are here because no one had, has, no hired one has, us. has hired us. Like they're just people waiting to be hired they're into the waiting. kingdom. So he says, <laughs> just waiting. I got something for you come to on. come. One hour of one work. One hour of work. <laughs> so they do one hour of work. Then at the end of the one hour, now, you know, he's paying everybody before the day is up. Yeah. He says to the guy, I'm going to pay. He gives everybody the same Him. amount of money. Yep. So these guys get upset by that. They're like, what do you mean? Yeah. He says, call the, the last fast. Yeah. Gives them the same amount. Daenerys. So the guy from the morning is like, hey. I'm happy. You, you, oh, <laughs> this is what one hour does. I know. <laughs> what is the whole day going to give us? But the guy is paid um, the, same. the same amount. So it causes some drama. Mm. It causes a lot of drama. So what happens is um, he, he, he says, how, how dare you be unfair? Now, if you're in the HR department, I'm sure <laughs> you're feeling this story. I you're know. like, you know what, you guy, you can't pay this guy this year's dues. But God is not like that. Yeah. He says, God is good all the time. Well, all the time. On. God is good. Yeah. <laughs> God is a gracious. But he says, he tells them, I'm going to give what I feel. Mm. Is, I'm gonna give we them. agreed on we this. We agreed on this. Yeah. He says, don't get upset. Mm. He says, it's not about the 
length of time. It's wow. not about how long you've done ministry, how long you've served. Wow. It's, a, it's about your willingness to serve God. Yeah. And I love it because we're all going to get to heaven one day and we're going to not... Getting to heaven is a first gift yeah. for everyone. Yeah. But we will receive rewards uh, based of our faithfulness, yes. based of our willingness to serve him. And yeah. it is for God to decide. Come on. So it's not about how long you served him. Yeah. It's about how you served him. Because God bridges the gap. And I think there are some people who are there for, you know, can God accept me? Mm. You know, I've wasted my life. Mm. Hey, even in the last one now, exactly. there's still a reward for yes, that. Yeah. There's still a reward for this. It's just come and serve in my kingdom. Yeah. And so this, uh, he's, he's trying to say, don't be spiritually blind. Come on. And, and, and come into my space, uh, you know, thinking how you're thinking, with earthly thinking. Yeah. He says, come and ask me for my spiritual eyes to be open. Come on. And I love this because then, you know, because now Jesus is in his last uh, section of his, you know, the rest of the, the Matthew is really about his last few days. Yes. Actually, I think it's, He's entered in his last seven days his or something like that. His last seven days, yeah. yeah. And so the rest of it is about that. And so now, mm. uh, the mother of uh, the disciples, because he's telling them, you know, my days are up. <laughs> I'm going to die, y'all. I'm going to die, y'all. <laughs> and the mother comes up and says, ah, you know, when, you, when you're coming to your kingdom, mm. on behalf of my sons, yes. uh, can they serve alongside you? Can they sit on your right and on your left? <laughs> hey, this mother. <laughs> She's, she's wonderful. And the songs are with her, but they can't speak. They're I too know. shy. Yeah. And so she comes and she pleads a case before him. And then and Jesus looks and says, and says, I don't know mm. if your sons can drink this cup that yeah. I'm about to drink. Yeah. The son, the, no, he turns and looks at the boys. So the boys will be their mom. They're with their mom. So the boys respond and they say, no, 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 we can drink of this mm. cup. So he looks at them, he laughs and he says, it's like he says, you know what? You're going to drink of that what? cup because yeah. you've requested of it. Yeah. He says, but to sit on the right and the left, I have no power. That's my father's father. Job. It's a father's job and he will decide about that. Yeah. And so it's true. If you think about it, this uh, mother, the mother of uh, the sons of Zebedee, Zebedee yeah. she ends up at the cross. She's one of the yeah. women who's at the cross with Jesus. Yeah. And when seeing she's Jesus looking, take his cup. Yes. And she's looking, not seeing the, the thieves, the two thieves, how she's seeing her sons. Oh. I'm sure that's what was happening on the right and on the left. And she's like, this man gave a prophetic word. Yeah, and so interesting, James becomes the first mm. apostle to die, mm-hmm. and John becomes the last apostle to die. Imagine. What? They, they drank of the cup. the cup. They drank of the cup. And what an emotional moment. I'm like, be <sighs> careful the things you ask for your children. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but then at the same time, it shows us because the, the disciples after that are upset when they hear that the mother requested. They're like, how can you guys have I know, voted I know. to in position Ken- yourselves? <laughs> in Kenya, we say, uh, be in position of power. <laughs> <laughs> you made yourself die. I love it. It's so funny because how dare you call your mom to come plead your case. So yeah. the, the, these guys get upset because they've been also having this battle. Yes. But it shows you the level of their spiritual blindness. They're still thinking that Jesus has come to uh, save them physically yeah. from the oppression of the Romans. Yeah. But it's like, but I've come to save the world. Yeah. And then he, it, I love it because immediately after that, the story that comes is how Jesus heals two blind men. Come on, come on. Now these two blind men, I love the story because they don't just address him as Jesus. They call Je- him by his title. Hey, son of David. Son of David. Son of dominion. Hey. Son of the kingdom. Right now. Son of rulership. Preach. Son of power. <laughs> son of the age. They <laughs> address him by his title, who he is. Yeah. And they say, save us, heal us. Mm. And Jesus turns and he heals them. And the most amazing thing is that these people immediately, because they had their eyes were open spiritually mm. as to who he was. Come on. Their eyes are also opened. When their eyes are opened, they choose to follow him. Come on. So this is him. what the disciples didn't know. They, mm. they were blinded. And so it's like Matthew is giving us this story to show us the people, some people who are blinded physically could see spiritually and some people who are you know, could see mm. physically were mm. blinded spiritually. Exactly. But what we're praying for this week is that your eyes will be open Come spiritually on. to what God is doing in our season and in our time. Mm. And so even as, as I read it, I said, God, open my eyes spiritually to yes. see what you're seeing about our times. Yeah. And then we see them going into the triumphant entry. We hey. all know this. You know, they, Jesus tells the disciples, go into the city. Yes. Yeah. So, so they're basically walking into Jerusalem. Jesus says, go go ahead of me to the village. And as you enter the village, yeah. you see a colt um, that has never been rode before, tied. 
and 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 try it and mm. bring it to me. Mm. And then he says, if anyone asks you what are you doing, say the master has That's need it. of it. Hey. And so, Pastor Angie, as I was thinking through this, I realized some of us don't have experiences. Mm -hmm. like the cult. Mm. Some of us have never been this way before. Wow. Wow. Some of us have never rode this, you know, this way before. Uh, but this is saying, and, and there's a condition tying you. Mm. But this is saying, the master has need of you. It's time mm -hmm. for the condition All to right. go. All the right. master has need of you. It's time for you to be untied. Amen. The master has need for Amen. you. It's time for you to get new experiences. The first ride you're going to be taking is by taking the gospel what? on your back. Amen. The very embodiment what? of the gospel. Somebody needs to be untied hey. right now because the master In has Jesus need of name. you. It's when you get of use to the master mm. that those things that have been tying you get unlocked. Those things that have been tying you get Amen. unchained. And there's a system that wants to ensure you remain untied. Yeah. There are people who want to say, why are you giving them that mm. job? Why are you untying them? Mm. Why are you releasing them from where mm. we've known them? But because, do you know the donkey didn't even need to speak? Imagine. In the past, you've heard donkey speaking. <laughs> but this time, the Lord said, because it's me getting to use you, I am going to be the one who speaks or, or, you know, on your behalf as far as the system Amen. that holds true Amen. to have you tied down uh, gets, uh, you know, is concerned. I'm going to be your advocate. I'm going to be your guide. As long as you are before them, I'm going to put my word in your mouth, the Lord hey. says. Uh, so yeah, be untied. I'm carry the gospel on your back. There's some things that will be unshackled off you Amen. as you get to do this. But more than that, is going to be your defender. Amen. That's a word. I'm going to take that word. Come on. Because this is, I feel like people need to accept this may be a new season mm. for you. Uh, and God is going to move you into your new season. Come on. Take that gospel on your back. Yeah. Uh, and move with it. Come on. What a privilege and an honor. Time for new experiences. I have never thought about the perspective Time for new of experiences. The Put yourself <laughs> in the story. Yep. The disciples, what I also note about it, noted about this part is the disciples immediately responded to Jesus request mm. without questions mm. they didn't say uh, how will we know the dog how will we recognize it they yeah. just said um, sama, sama. what if they beat us yeah what if they beat us what if they called yeah. us away <laughs> he says and Jesus finished the instruction without them interrupting well usually the interruptions say, yeah. ah, but then uh, how, how will we yeah. and so for us who are disciples don't stress on the journey there'll be seasons of you questioning there'll be seasons where it becomes easy to follow and so I, I noticed the ease of following at this point Yeah. Uh, I noticed that they didn't have as many questions and I'm like oh may my season come come on. Uh, as well where when when Jesus will ask me to do this strange thing, walk up to again, pick up his coat. Come on. <laughs> yeah. see, it is for the, the master's need. The master's need. I was like, that's such an odd thing. But it was easy for them to follow at that point. Yeah. And so he um, you know, over time they followed. Come on. Um Easy. And I really love that. And so then the city, it was a Passover time. Yes. So people, Jews across the world were coming into the city to celebrate Passover. Lambs, many lambs were going to be slaughtered that weekend. Yeah. Uh, and so when, when Jesus came on the donkey, the whole city was a buzz and excited because they know. Yes. Remember this, but you need to know they're spiritually blind. Yes. According to them, they're looking forward to their deliverance. A delivering king. From the hand of their oppressor, which is the Roman yeah. Empire. And they're like, we're gonna be released. You know what so, they say, Hosanna. Yes. So Hosanna means save now. Yes. So it's a military term in a sense. So they are saying that mm. um, the city is being shook. For everybody shouting, they are seeing palms. Mm. Uh, you know, there people are shouting and declaring Hosanna in the highest. And then Jesus walks up to Jerusalem. Yep. Then they know he's gonna go to the Roman uh, side. side and uh, tell them off. Right? Yeah. But Jesus moves the other direction. <sighs> He what goes to shock. the temple. What a shock! <laughs> They're like, brother, donkey cult is going the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, so the, the temple is on this side. Mm. The, the establishment has their, you know, whatever on this side. He should go on this side and win. Like that's why it's a triumphant entry. It's like a Roman soldier entering Jerusalem, exactly. coming to conquer, conquer in general. Yeah. So they are like, yo, it's now. Go to this side. Wrong turn. Wrong turn. The guy goes to the temple. Wow. He gets into the temple and see what he does. He gets into the temple. Whip them. Ja, 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 whip them. <laughs> <laughs> he starts to whip them. He whips the, what do you call it? The, 
the, the, money, the money changes. changes. <laughs> he starts to declare war on them. He's like, how dare you do this? Come on. And so it tells me that at, at some point, the, uh, the, the disciples were like, what's happening here? Mm. They're like, you're supposed to be doing exactly what you're doing is the correct thing. Yeah. But on the other side, yes. my friend, yes. go do it to the Romans. Wow. He says, my house shall, shall not be called a den of robbers. How dare you make it? It shall be called a house of prayer. Come on. And so he attacks them. Mm. The, the, the Pharisees, the high priests, they get so offended. It says they yeah. become indignant. Hey. Says, because he's quoting from Jeremiah and they know the word. They're like, how dare you? So he's like, how are you quoting the word at us and telling us mm. that we have made your house a, a, a space of, of, of robbery? Yeah. And so they get very upset. They get indignant. I love that word because it's it's a level up of anger. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not that way you're offended. It's not just hurt. It's not just hurt. It's not just disagreement. No, 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 no. no. It's indignant. Indignant. <laughs> You've learned a new word in English. Now, when you I next know. time you're upset, upset, yes. say, I'm indignant. Anyway, <laughs> so they become indignant and they start to plot and say, How are we going to trap this man? Mm. And so, uh, so they start to, to cast him. Now, in the middle of all this, Jesus leaves the temple. And on his, uh, I think the next day, when he's, he's coming back with his disciples, the, he sees a fig tree. He walks up to a fig tree. Come on. And um, he, he sees it's blooming because it's, it's all green. And um, I think it's producing some fruit that's supposed to come out when it's in season. Mm. And so he goes says, oh, it's the leaves that are, I think when they come out when the, the, the what's it called, the fruit is supposed to be under. Yeah. So he goes to it, but there's no fig tree. Oh, there's no, there's fig, no figs. figs. And yeah. so he curses it. Yeah. And he and I think that prophetically what he was doing as well was cursing it also because he's gone to the temple and he says, you guys have no fruit. Mm. You seem as if. Mm. You look as if. Wow. In fact, the temple is beautiful. It's almost at its prime. Yeah. And then he says, but you have nothing. It's become a den of I can't. If I can't, and someone said, if I can't eat from you, then mm. no one will eat from you. Exactly. So he curses it. And and the and the disciples are like, alas, my friend, how do we do that as mm. well? He says, he tells them, you will one day be able to do mm. this. He says, if you believe, you yourself will be able to speak to the mountain and it will be moved. Move. And I'm like, hey, Father, I want that faith. Yeah. I want that experience of yeah. God to be made manifest in my life. And I'm yeah. like, and that will happen for us. True. But he says, you have to. I think what I love about that story, it shows us the power of the word. Mm. He says, when the word is lived out, it has power for you to speak to the mountain. Come on. He says, it's not just saying, okay, I'm in church shouting. He says, the word must be lived out. Yeah. So we're coming out of a season of fasting. We're coming out of a season of, we're in the season of reading the word. Mm. Don't just read. Come Don't on. just do the fast to do the fast. He says, yeah. let the word become life to you. Wow. Then you can say to that mountain, you can say to that thing that you're facing, move yeah. and it will be moved. Yeah. And then now the, 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 the Pharisees, <laughs> And the Sadducees, they come and they don't know they've been plotting. They're like, we have to defeat this guy. Yeah. And so they question his authority. They ask him, how do you speak like that? Who you know, these you? Sadducees, mm. they were sad. <laughs> they you were see? sad. They were sad, you see. <laughs> that's my joke. I know. <laughs> but they were sad, you see. Uh, so that's what they call Sadducees. So now that they, they come and they, they want to question his authority. And he, he, he asks them. You know, which authority did, did uh, John the Baptist uh, mm. speak on? Mm. And because they don't want to tell themselves they didn't answer, he says, yeah. because you're not answering, even, even me. me, I won't answer you. Yeah, Kirusha Narusha. Uh, <laughs> so the Sadducees um, <laughs> come together. The thing about the sad, uh, Sadducees is that they were sad. They literally were sad. They don't believe in Holy Spirit uh, things. No angels. No angels. They no don't resurrection believe in resurrection. The dead. They don't believe in the power of mm. God, the manifest power of God. So they're sad. And so Jesus, they come to Jesus and they say, we need to trap him. Yeah. So they they come up with a question on um, resurrection. Mm. And so they say, you know, this guy had two wives. So, you know, read. I want you guys to read the story. Yeah. I'm not going to give you everything. Come on. And so they try and trap him about it. And he tells them, I'm not the God of the dead. Mm. I'm the God, God of Abraham, living. Isaac, Jacob. And when he says that, he refers to them as the living. Mm. And he shuts them up. They don't know what to say to that because they actually believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so oh, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we cannot come back to that. So, no, I get it. They're like, God is a God of the living. Mm. But the Sadducees don't believe in the resurrection of mm. the dead. Mm. So when God says, I'm God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they are living. Mm. So the Sadducees don't know, don't know what to do with that because they don't believe. Yeah. 
Pastor <laughs> Angie. <laughs> So they they are so but the Pharisees wow. who are far you see <laughs> so not the Pharisees these guys they don't get along with the Sadducee guys mm. uh, but because they want to trap Jesus they come together yeah. and can agree how do we trap this guy yeah how dare he call us uh, robbers? Mm. So they come together themselves and say, let's call a club meeting because we have to defeat this guy. True. So they Your say, enemy is my enemy. Your enemy is my enemy, <laughs> making us pals. Yeah. So they decide, how will we trap him? So they get their lawyer, they get the, the best mind, they get the mm. lawyer. I don't know what it says about lawyers. I'm not saying, it just says that in the word. It says the, the lawyer is the one who was called. So the lawyer comes and says, I love you, lawyers. Just, mm. just saying. Yeah. So it says, <laughs> so he says to the, the lawyer comes and says, what is the greatest law? Mm. In the Bible, uh, in, in the law that we can follow, they're trying to trap him. And the reason they're trying to trap him is because Jews, uh, it was the religious law, but it was also their social law. It's how they live yeah, their lives. Yeah. It spoke about everything. And so they don't have, you and I think of 10 laws, then they think of uh, 613 laws uh, in the word. Mm. They see themselves having 613 written laws, but then they also have all these other laws that they've come out because they're like, we want to live out the I word. know. And so they, they get so um, legalistic. Minute details. They, minute details. Because they're like, okay, fine. The law says uh, have Sabbath. They're mm. like, fine, observe Sabbath. They're like, um, you guy, but when my farm, in my farm, and I have a farm, when my hen <laughs> hatches an egg, uh, what do I do when it gives birth on the Sabbath? Uh, and I can't pick it because if I pick it, then I'm working. So the, they came together, the the you know the, the heads, yeah. the, the, what's it called, the, the chief priest, and they said, you know what, you can pick it, but yeah. sell it to a gentile. Wow, the heads. Then you're it. not, you're not, <laughs> you're not breaking the law. You're not breaking the law. <laughs> They're like, cause we can't make a loss. We can't make a loss. I know. Cause it means the hen worked. I... The, even your own hen worked. Oh, you yeah. can't milk on that day. They're like, how? They even used to dictate how much do you milk? Wow. How much do you pick grain on mm. the day? That's why they attacked them on the way when they yeah. picked up some grain and eat. And it's like, guys, Jesus is like, it's not about the pettiness. It's about your heart. Oh, come on, it's a posture. It's, it's, it's a posture of your heart. May your eyes be spiritually open to see what I desire to see in you. It's not about oh. getting lost in these details. So you could be following the law but your posture is mm, wrong mm. and so you're spiritually blind exactly. as I said it's the blind guiding the blind, it's a blind and so God blind. is looking at the heart exactly. and the posture of the heart not just the outcome mm. or the you know the things that people see in the and outside so, and so he responds by saying the greatest uh, commandment we all know it the yeah. greatest law he says is love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, soul and with all your mind and, so, yeah, and, and, so all this is the, and all your strength so this is the first uh, command and yeah. then he says and the second most important one is love that your neighbor, neighbor as yourself and says and it's just as important as the first one yeah he nyamazishas them he keeps them quiet they are flabbergasted they are confused zip <laughs> so the pharisees who are far you see yes. they keep quiet and um so these guys say we can't catch him by questioning him and so then Jesus goes, I, I keep telling you that every story leads to him giving mm. a parable so that he can, uh, what's it called? He can link it with what he's saying. Yeah. And so then he talks about the parable of the two sowers mm. and what Jesus, had, um, or the two sons, sons the parables yeah. of the, the tenants, the parable of the wedding feast, wow. the parable he talks about. So what he's doing here is he's giving parables and he's saying, guys, you're spiritually blind. Mm. And because you're blind, he says, the kingdom of God is passing you. The word of the Lord is passing you True. because you're blind. And so he tells the Sadducees, he tells the Pharisees, he tells the priests who are so caught up in the law. He says, my word is passing you. Mm. Your season has passed. It's moving on <sighs> to people who you thought did not deserve the kingdom, True. but now deserve the kingdom. Yeah. He says, are those people who you saw who are, uh, you, you said tax collectors were sinners, you said prostitutes, he says, these are the people that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God first. Imagine they're going to get it first and not last. And so I, I wanted to tell you and say, may your eyes be open in this season. Come Even on. as you read this word, say, may my eyes be open. May mm. I see what you're trying to say to me in this season. There's a parable of the wedding feast in the middle hey, of all that, which yeah, we all love. Yeah. Because in this parable, Jesus calls out, he says, there's a, a rich man who's throwing a feast. He invites guys over for dinner. 
But people start giving excuses. I know. So first of all, he's like, come over for my dinner. It's a dinner, I think his son wedding or something like that. So come for the dinner. But the excuses people are giving are for the day. Mm. Oh, I have oxen. They need to, mm. you know. Oh, I have a wife. <laughs> they, oh, student. Like, it's excuses for the day. Yeah. But you, you know, you've been called for a dinner. Mm. And so he's like, okay. In the end, he's like, go call everyone. Go in the seats. Bring everyone. And the idea is that as they come into the wedding backward, they're actually clothed. Mm. And then Kidoga Kidogo, there's just someone there over there dancing by Zokizo. And then he's like, yo, you don't have the right clothes. Imagine. And so he's kicked out. Kicked out. <laughs> and he says, he'll be, it's, it's amazing because he says, tie him up. Mm. Tie him out. There where there'll be gnashing of teeth, yes. weeping. Yes. And I'm like, God has invited you to heaven. We began this this week saying God had these rewards for us in True. heaven. But he says there's an appropriate clothing. And part of that mm. is you accepting the word and living the word. Come on. There's a willingness that needs to be there in our posture. Yes. And so he says, uh, for many are called, but few are chosen. Yes. So he's saying, be one of the chosen ones and accept my word, accept my clothing. Yeah. So it's not just to come and say, oh, I'm in the kingdom, I'm doing church live out literally live out yeah, the word be of clothed god in righteousness be clothed in his yes, glory yes come on so good and then we go into the, them questioning him again about taxes mm. and he says uh he says give to caesar what caesar and give to yes. man what's so I, I really like that god story um uh, this is Matthew 22 now over verse 19 yeah? and so what happens is that uh, guys come and, and they want to trap him again and they're like, you know, should we give taxes to Caesar? Because the idea is that if he says don't, mm. then they'll be able to accuse him to the Romans. If he says do, then they'll be able to accuse him to the Jews because mm. he's like, this guy is, um, is making sure that you guys stay enslaved. And so he's like, give me a coin. And then he shows them and says, what image is this? And the guy says, it's the image of Caesar. And so he says, give to Caesar what belongs it's to Caesar. Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. And the idea is to invite us to be people who harvest uh, for the kingdom, the people people bring people to God because people are the image bearers of God. And so he's saying, give money to Caesar, give you know, pay your taxes, but give to God what belongs to God. Give to God what has the image bearing of God, exactly. which is you and I, which is people. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be the reason why people don't get to experience God in a sense. That's what he's saying. I love it. I love yeah. it because you can see here that by the end of this, because I think I, I mixed it up, this is now when it comes to the, he must get the Sadducees and the mm. Pharisees. And then this is what leads them to them saying, you know what? We are not going to question you anymore. Yeah. And so then what I love about this section, uh, what I, I love about this spiritual blindness, it just highlights for us mm. how it's very easy to be in the kingdom, but still be spiritually blind. True. It's very easy to be exposed to the word, oh. exposed to his church, but still be spiritually blind. Wow. Because the Pharisees were there. They, yeah. they were teaching the word. True. But they got so caught up in being legalistic that they missed out on the whole point of the message of Christ, which is not just to save the Jews, but and to come so that he may save the world. Mm. And so it's not enough to come and shout Hosanna. It's not enough to come and be led by Maluki on Sunday or Riga or, you know, <laughs> and just be extending a word to be doing the fast. He says, God, may your word change me. Yeah, may you open our eyes. Open my eyes that I may be like the blind man and see you for who you are, the son of David who came to save the world. Come on. And so then Jesus turns to the crowd in chapter 23, and we're going to read this halfway. And he ends this saying, the turns to the crowd and he says, Woe to the Pharisees mm. and the and the, and, the, and the scribes who sit uh, and who sit on the seat of Moses, who this is the seat of authority. Yeah. You have the seat of authority, but you're blind. Come on. And he says, This word is leaving you. It, you're, you're being left by it. It's moving to these uh, who are coming in last. Mm. And I said, May it not be of me. True. May it not be of my family mm. that I miss out on what you're doing. And so what my prayer is for you is that as you read this coming week, may your eyes be open to an area in your life that you have been blind. Yeah. May your eyes be open to see what God is saying about you in this season, what God is saying in this church, that your heart may be open to him. And I pray for a, just a new level for you in ministry. Wow. Yeah. Sanji, that's an amazing takeout for how mm. this week will look like. Now, towards the end, I have a question for you. Mm. Towards the end, I think on Sunday, many people will have this question. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, chapter 23, verse 9 says, uh, Do not call anyone on the earth father, for you have one father in heaven, nor anyone to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. How about that? Because we're in a season of spiritual fathers, spiritual yeah, parenting. I know what it's um, saying. Uh, yeah. How do you reconcile that? So what I love is because 
Jesus doesn't give a point without describing something. Mm. So he's been he's been talking, he's been giving us parables about people who have been leading in the in the wrong way. Oh. And so this uh, section where he turns to the people, he's he's telling them these guys. He even tells them in verse three, he says, um, the scribes in verse two, he says, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. He says, so practice and observe mm. what they tell you. So mm. he says, listen to them, listen mm. to what they're saying, but do, do not, not do what they do. True. They preach, but they do not practice. Mm. So what he's saying is the word of God is the word of God. The word of God has power and it is life. He says, but the servant observe how they live out. Are they mm. living the word? If they're not living the word, then he says, that is when you don't call them ah. fathers. That is when you don't call them your instructors. That's when you don't call them rabbis. It's also a warning to us who are leaders. Yeah. Now, you may look and say, that's for Pastor Angie, that's for Pastor Angie, that's mm. for Give the rev. It's not just for us. It is a warning to us. Like when I read, I will say, "Father, may I never be a Pharisee." Wow. But then, if you're a parent, it means you're a you're a spiritual parent. Yep. If you are a DG leader, if you are a leader in your church, if team. you are a, or a team, if you're in an organization and you are the Christian in that organization, imagine you're the spiritual head of that. Space. Yeah. And so, what God is saying to you says, "Never be a Pharisee." Wow. Don't leave for people to see because it talks about the, the you know the the phylacteries how they used to do their clothes yeah they have big um prayer things they have big tassels for everybody to see and touch it says stop living a fake christian life mm. what jesus is attacking is people who are fake wow he says live out your faith honestly and so i love it because saying don't be spiritually blind Come on. in this season says if you see your leader is struggling that way then pray for them at least that's what we're at being. yeah in fact i'd have mercy on them because i say how you're missing out on the word true what to you because yeah. that's jesus himself says what to you Pharisees? Wow. Wow. you will end up being the last mm. and not the first wow yeah what an amazing check out this week is uh just praying and asking God to remove spiritual blindness mm. from us so that we are able to see. It's almost like that prayer that I think it's Elisha who prayed over the servant and said, open their eyes yeah. that they may see the meet multitudes of angels yeah. that surround you. Yeah. May God open your eyes that you may see the glorious riches of inheritance among the saints. So that's the week. Uh, this week, I'm so looking forward to you guys engaging with that even as we get uh, into the month of February. And so that's the takeout with Mikel the Rep and Pastor Angie. Thank you all. See you next week on Monday. Blessings.